This is the grade six math practice test for T and ready. Question number, currently number eight. The height and inches of each of the players on a girls basketball team are shown, and they give you the list of numbers. Which box plot correctly represents the data? Now, we first we need to talk about what a box plot is. If you are interested on the side, just as an aside here, um, 60 inches is five feet. So if you want to know well, how tall are they, so this uh, this girl is five exactly, five three, five eight, five ten. Now with that out of the way, um, we'll talk about the plot itself. This is what a box plot looks like. Sometimes it's called a box and whisper plot. These are a whisker plot. These are the whiskers here. Um, at this end, you have the smallest number, so you call that the minimum value. And I'll just put min there. Up here is the largest value, and that's the max. And we might have some numbers that are like way outside the norm, and we, there's a card outliers, and we'd have them out here. They'd actually be past what we would consider the normal minimum value. But generally speaking, if the numbers are all over the place, and these are certainly within a reasonable range, this is the minimum and this is the maximum. The middle value right here is the median. That's to say the middle number. Once we arrange them in numeric order, and we will. And this value is called Q1, which is quartile 1, the first quartile, or the lower quartile, if you'd rather. What that is, is essentially, this is the middle between the min and the max. Q1 would be the middle between the minimum and the median. So it's like breaking it up into four quarters, and this is between quarter 1 and quarter 2. And this one is the... Uh, upper quartile that's called Q3 similar to Q1 it's just the middle point between median and maximum so now that we have that we need to start looking at the numbers themselves you want to have a system in place to make sure that you have all the numbers down here when you start to analyze them because you need to put the numbers in numeric order first I need to count how many there are There's 12 of them, so I'm going to put 12 over here to remind myself that this needs to have 12 as well. Then I can start putting them in order. 60 is the first one. And after I write it down, I'll mark it out. 63 is the next number, and there's two of them. No 64. 65 is here and here, so there's two 65s. 66 looks like a lot. 1, 2, 3, 4. One, two, three, four. Don't get lost in your head and just count 6's there because you'll get 4 much faster. And then 68, and there's 2 of them. And then 70 is the final one. Now I just need to go back, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. See, it matches the number, so I'm good to go. The first thing I'm going to look for, I already have the minimum and maximum values. They're at 60 and 70, so like that. So if these weren't all marked in exactly 60 and 70, I can mark one out. I can't do that here. Now I'm ready to look for the median number. So... Median and mean are not the same thing. Mean would mean I'd add all the numbers and divide by 12 because there's 12 of them. Median is just the middle number once you put them in order, so it can actually be different than the median. So I'm going to start at, like, mark off one at each end to get to the middle, but I'm not going to do it by marking through the number because I think that's, I hate erasing it again. So what I usually do is put a dot on top of the first set and then a dot on the bottom of the next set. So this is like me marking out this one and this one and this one and this one. Then I go back to the top and then I go to the bottom. And then I go back to the top and then I go to the bottom. And once you have two dots together, you know you're at the middle. The median, if there is an odd number, is always a single number. If I have 11 points, there is a middle number by itself. In this case, I have the median is actually created by two numbers. So the median's in the middle. If they were not the same number, I would have to average them. If somehow or other the middle numbers were 50 and 60, I'd add them together to get 110 divided by 2 and get 55. That would be the middle number. In this case, it's actually really easy because they're both 66, so spoiler alert, the median is 
66. So I can start to look. This has a median there. This one does not, so that's out. This one, no, and this one does. So it's either A or D. That's all I have left. Now I can find quarter one in a similar fashion to what I, to what I did to find the median value. And nicely, they're already grouped. So in this case, I'm just going to draw... Um, I usually, when I do it the second time, I'll do like a little line on the top of the bottom. So I'll do this, and this, this, and this, this, and this. See how there's two lines on top? This is my group for quarter one. So I'm going to have to find what the middle of those two numbers is because they're not the same. Fortunately, it's easy because they're right next to each other. 63 and 65, in between them would be 64, right? So my quarter one value is 64. So I can look to see where's my quarter one. Oh, that's looking good. So I think it's going to be this one. That's out because it's too far down. But I'm going to go through and check the other side as well to find my Q3 value or my upper quartile. You don't always have to start it on top. See how this one's on top? Just to separate it out so I don't get them confused, I might put the first set on the bottom. On the top. On the bottom. On the bottom. There's my middle set. Between 68 and 66 is 67. So my Q3 value is 67. And that matches up perfectly. So my answer to number 8 is A. Anytime you have a box plot, the first thing you need to do is put the numbers in numeric order. Then go through and mark it up to far, or I guess then you'd identify the minimum maximum values. Then you would go through and find your median. Um, if you want to use this dot slash method, which I guess is like Morse code or something, um, to find the middle, it works for me. And it makes sure that I don't make a mistake because that's my biggest fear on this kind of test or really anything like this. It's just that I'll make some ridiculous, careless mistake and I will send a message to the state that I'm not as smart as I am. Not me. I mean, just put yourself in that place. In, in this case, me means you. Um, just be careful. That's what matters. And then find Q1 and find Q2 in, or Q3 in similar fashion. And you should have a nice box plot to work with.